All right, so the mic is on, and I'll let you guys play pass back. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm Anthony. Alex. Joe. We're back so We're at Epicenter, but it's not the first time I've seen you guys live. I was actually in Las Vegas for the Happens Convention, and you guys played a Which used to be Kill Pop. Yes. You played a very small show for us. That was the first time I got to see you live. And I want to start with the fact, it's been a long time since a band has given me the feels with a song. But holy crap, when you did Ghost on stage, I just wanted to fall into a puddle and cry. It's an amazing song. Tell me a little bit about the background with that. Where it came from. Uh, it's a very personal song. I deal with a lot of anxiety and depression issues, especially to do with on stage and this career choice that, I, that I've picked for myself as the singer in a band. And so that was a song that was written right after a tour. That was a, a tough tour for me. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think, in the lyrics. Yeah. yeah. That's one. I still play it on, like, the reg. I, I cannot get enough of it. And thank you for that. Thank and you for saying that. Up with heroin. Holy crap. That thing's just flying. Yeah. It's number two right now. Yeah. I think we, we might hit that number one. We need, we need Black Keys to move over. Yeah. Just shove them out. Yeah. Come on, Black Keys. You've had enough hits. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> And I know that patience is not exactly one of your strongest points. I read something about you secretly started recording an album. Started and finished. Yeah, because you just couldn't wait for the record company. That's the thing when you're in a band starting out. There, there's a lot of politics and hoops to jump through just to like get the ball rolling. And uh, we've always been a very DIY kind of group. Like when it comes to our stage performance and we write all, all, all our songs and we make our music videos and all that stuff. And so rather than, we, we knew that we had a major label deal sort of in the works. We had a feeling it was going to go through, but we didn't want to wait for lawyers to go back and forth to sign the deal to eventually get your advance money to pick a producer to do all that stuff. So like while the negotiations were happening, we just started making an EP. Right, you're not there for the business, yeah. you're there for the music. Yeah, so we made an EP and then we finally signed the deal and they're like, all right, let's talk about making, you know, some music. And we're like, we already did it. Here you go. Yep. That's awesome. It's amazing. And now you're with uh, Big Machine. Yeah. And you are the first rock band on the label, right? Not technically. We're, we were the first new rock band, like up and coming rock band that they signed. They had Cheap Trick okay. prior to us, but sort of a different thing. So do you feel the pressure where you're like, okay, guys, we have to be the one to sign? No, the not at all. Yeah. They felt the pressure. They're like, we're Big Machine. We've been doing country and killing it. We're going to move over to rock and hope that this works. For us, we're just like, we're, we don't care. Yeah. So, all right, we talked a little bit about the Vegas show, and today you played this. Very small crowd versus very large crowd. Right. Is one easier than the other when you take that stage? Yeah, big crowds are easier. Big crowds are easier. So much easier. I, I thought so, too. Yeah. Like, I sing the National Anthem once for 17,000 people, but when I go do karaoke, I hide behind. Oh, I don't fuck with karaoke. <laughs> No. If you had to, what would be your song? Oh. You know what my song would be? It would either be a Tears for, oh, a Tears for Fears. Sure. Everybody wants to rule the world. Or it would be um, Aerosmith. Uh, don't want don't to close my eyes. Yeah, don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> yeah. What about y'all? I got B-52's Rock Lobster. Yeah. For sure. Red Light sure. Special, TLC. Oh. Shh. Caught up in you, 38 Special. Oh, two 38 Specials. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Little girl. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's Mother's Day Oh fuck. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> do, we need to, like, do we need to head over to Amazon and like order gifts real yes. quick? Yes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> oh my god. So, I take it then. I was going to ask, what did we get mom for Mother's Day? But uh, <laughs> should I just go with a phone call? It's probably going to be a phone call on my end. You got something, right? You were saying you. You were, Joey was prepared for Mother's Day. I remember him saying that a couple days ago. I've, it slipped my mind. I'm never prepared. I always have to come up with some sort of speech. I don't like these Hallmark holidays where you're like forced to. I don't like that. Yeah. Let's be done with them. I hear you. Right? The moms love them. <laughs> That's the problem. Every, every day is Mother's Day. We can be done with them, but our moms. Good love point. Them. Yeah. Like, there's the 
band mom, there's there's the looker, there's the chef. What is everybody's roles? Prior to being in a bus, when we were in a van and a very small crew, uh, Alex never drove. So Alex was maintenance. He made sure the trash was uh, in the trash can and cleaned up. I did a lot of the drive. We, we all we split some of the driving. What else did we do? Uh, I, I, I'm... I'm yeah, we're all stagehands. I'm usually a tech. If a piece of gear breaks or something breaks, I'm like electronically savvy, so I'm like soldering wires and fixing things. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, the D DJ varies. That's a good question, though. Cause I like that. What else? That's it. I'm usually the last person to move gear. I don't like to lift heavy things. The bigger our band gets, the more of a diva singer I become. And I'm like, I'm just going to sit in the air-conditioned van while everybody else does everything. Yeah. There you go. Set it up for me. I could teach you. Oh, eh, there's that whole seat ass ratio that's a little off. <laughs> so it might be a little hard. But what's something that you kind of want to share about someone else? Uh -oh. Joe is a baseball star, major league baseball star. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> about somebody else? I don't know. Anthony is a closet case stand-up comic. Okay. Are they good jokes? He's very, very funny. Yeah. Yeah, we were always jo joking about, like, if we play a show and we don't have an opening band, we want Anthony to go out and do a stand-up set. But I might lose my sitcom. I, that's yeah, he's dirty. Edgy jokes. It's a, bit, it's, a bit, it's a bit too edgy for 2019. What else? I said Joe. I gave, I gave Anthony. Mm, Al's a video game star. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Al's actually a really good guitar player, aside from bass. That's right. There you go. <laughs> Google. Just Google bad flower. Don't put a space in it. It's just bad flower, one word. You'll find all this stuff. There's like, does anybody even like type in www? I can't remember the last time I typed in a URL for anything. I learned the hard way though when that band Fun came out. That was a pain in the ass, yeah. Fun period, I think that was the trick with that. You had to put the period on it. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate you. And, oh, there we go.